the kind of music that I'm writing now, that I eventually kind of think I found myself, and I'm only maybe about seven years old or eight years old that way, uh, as a musician who's just taking birth kind of thing. But um, my music is a little bit more uh, uh, harmonically complex, so therefore is not very familiar to normal set of ears who are used to kind of that kind of easy listening which is great uh, I played that a lot also uh, that kind of so I've, I'm not playing that so I'm kind of wanting to it's kind of a like you're saying a double energy happening a contradictory energy also is happening I'm saying I want to play to a life to people but my music that I'm writing is actually chasing the crowd away so now this is a situation, I, I'm always going to be what I am and I'm going to grow but I only hope that the crowd or the listener, the audience should educate themselves a little bit, become open, grow their ears and let me write, imprint my letter on their chest and then you go home and check out what you feel instead of me coming down and do the Doors and the Pink Floyd all my life and die as, as a nobody. And you know what, after a while, if someone's playing, if someone's telling me, Amita, you just sounded like Jimi Hendrix, I kind of feel insulted. Because, and I started feeling that when I was 20, 22, because I'm just beginning to get myself into my thing. Or maybe a little later. Why? Because this guy is standing right in front of you, you're playing guitar, you're standing there, and he's not even talking about you, he's talking about Jimmy. Where do you feature there? So it's a kind of a direct insult. Especially when you're playing guitar for 35, 40, 45 years. So all these philosophical, when you put your head on the pillow at night, alone, even after 15,000 people have gone home, you're alone eventually. All these questions, I mean like, yeah, then he said, you know, 15,000 people said, man, you're this god and I want to touch your finger and give me your finger. And I said, but I didn't play my notes. Why are you telling me, go and do it to Jimmy or Richie Blackmore or whoever? Mm -hmm. Why do you want to come and listen to me? Mm -hmm. So I changed. This instrument kind of dragged me into a place where I only heard my heart calling out, saying, do this, do that, do this, do that. And I just chased that. I kind of find, like for example, I'll give you a little bit of a, tech, it's not technical, it's the language that we speak. If I, if I play that, it's a very really beautiful sounding chord, it's a major seven chord. Seven. Usually, you'll be probably hearing people play this, or this, this is great also. You know, which is great. But you know what, I found a way to play this. It's an eight, I think it's an eight note scale. Five, six, seven, eight note scale. And, and it's got a lot of tension, dissonance, uh, and suddenly uh, this becomes another sonic vibe to me. And I kind of and then extract some scales from that. So now it might just sound whoever's listening or watching me for this interview might say, might think this, this is technical. But language in the beginning is technical. If you didn't know the letters, you won't speak, even a simple line. Uh, to shoot this, you have to know what the light thing is and whatever, you know. So that kind of thing. So that gives me another vibe or, or, or um, another sound. So to understand this language, I have to have musicians who understand because this is not being played ever by anyone, ever. It's not like a major scale. Okay, I know major scale. No, this is a scale that you have to learn from me, you know. Eventually it lands up being a major seven, but it's got a lot of... And it's got a kind of a marwa. You know, so it's all there, a harmonic minor as well. You're all sitting inside that. So whenever I can pick out that color or mix them, uh, get another 
like a pink or a gray or a pinky gray or a gray mm -hmm. pink, you know, <laughs> uh, and make them. And that's the language, that's art, you know. And then you, you, you cannot have an audience. I mean, I want to listen to my favorite song, buy a CD and go. Do I look like a Xerox machine? No. So it's a deep study, you know, it's, it's a deep place that we are standing. So I think we need some validation for that and respect and uh, whatever, you know, just to say, okay, this is like you keep saying, this is a way of life, like rock and roll was a way of life, you know. It's a very language has to be that. And just putting on distortion, black t-shirt, long hair doesn't mean rock and roll, you know. One guy could be with the, with the tilok and the dhuti and a tiki can be the hardest rock and roll player in the world, you know. He just dresses up like that. So it's all about the heart and the mind and stuff like that. So yeah, that's the art.